So for this video, we're going to be looking at the scapula, specifically passive accessory motion or glides of the scapula. Now you might ask yourself, it's a pseudo joint, that being the scapula thoracic uh, joint. So why are we gliding it? Why are we applying these passive accessory motions to it? Well, following periods of immobilization, say for example, when you're in a sling or casted post-operatively or post-trauma, the scapula can in essence kind of bind down on the thoracic rib cage or become rather immobile. And so in order to restore or to uh, help facilitate normal scapula thoracic and really scapula humoral uh, range of motion, it's helpful to provide some manual interventions to promote that normal mobility. And so there's a couple that we look at. If we think of the scapula, we can kind of draw some coordinates on here. We can think of a medial and a lateral glide, which would help with things like protraction and retraction. We can think of a inferior, inferior and um, superior glide, and that would help with things like reaching overhead and depressing the arm. There is a degree of rotation, obviously, that occurs as well, so we can incorporate that. And then the fourth is distraction, actually kind of bringing the scapula away from the rib cage. You might say, why would we want to do that? Isn't that uh, typically pathologic where we have more medial border prominence? In fact, it actually is, is very, very comfortable and kind of can induce this ah feeling in patients who have been immobilized following a surgical procedure. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing we need to do is to make sure that we're not kind of laying over on our patient and reaching over. We need to have them slide towards us on the table. We're going to kind of approximate our body to theirs. And what can oftentimes help is to kind of bring their arm either on this side or on this side, depending upon the size of them. Uh, I find kind of allowing them uh, to kind of tuck this arm here can sometimes move the scapula into a position that's a little bit easier for me to get a hold of. However, uh, for the time being, we're just going to allow it to kind of rest here on the table because in this case, we have a pretty good idea of where the scapula is. So things that we need to identify. First, we, we can see kind of the medial scapular border here. If we bring the individual back just a little bit, you can see that all the more kind of pop out. That also lets us find our inferior angle as well as the spine of the scapula. The spine of the scapula separating our infra fossa, right, where we would find our infraspinatus from our supra fossa, which is where we find our supraspinatus, okay? So we find our spine, we find our medial border, our lateral border, as well as our inferior angle. And again, if we just kind of retract here a little bit, we can really accentuate those borders for us to utilize. So at this point, we're ready to begin. With our inferior and superior glides, we're going to place that inferior angle right in our web space of our hand. We're then going to take our other hand right along the spine of the scapula, and we're ready to begin our mobilization. So we're gonna go superior and now inferior. Superior, my left hand is doing most of the work. Inferior, my right hand is doing most of the work. Now what's kind of fun about this as well is we can incorporate a little bit of a P and F pattern here once we've uh, kind of regained some of the mobility. So for example, while this is a passive accessory technique, you can make it a passive assistive technique. So for example, I could say to my patient, I want you to make this motion here superior. Go ahead and go, 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 go. And I can resist him a little bit to help those muscles have a little bit more activity and a little better uh, firing. Now I can say I want you to make this motion here and I can demonstrate it first or pattern it and now he can push down. Push, 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 push and I can help to resist that as well. So keep in mind you have a couple different options available to you with this. So superior and inferior. Additionally, if we change our hands just a little bit, we can create a little bit of rotation. So now we're going to move a little bit more laterally with this hand. We're going to stay on that inferior angle with our other hand, and now we can work a little bit of rotation. This would be upward rotation. And then we can also work downward rotation.
And again, you can appreciate if you've been immobilized and you haven't really been moving this a whole lot, how good this would feel. The benefit as well is this is all passive. And so we're not really impacting distal structures or the joint as much. And so while it can't be performed immediately postoperatively, this is how you could begin to grade exposure if you're not yet clear to be working on the glenohumeral joint. So we've done inferior, superior, we've done uh, medial and lateral rotation. We still need to look at medial and lateral glide. For this, we need to find the medial border. Again, if we slightly kind of uh, retract here, we can really get a hold of that medial border. And here we can bring that individual more laterally, or we can help to bring them more medial. This one tends to be the one that uh, from a, a medial lateral side, you don't need a ton of pressure on for most individuals. And additionally from here, you can also make the switch to distraction. Distraction looks like this. Find the medial border. You're gonna kind of bring your hands up behind the scapula. So it's through the rhomboids and mid trap. And then you're actually going to kind of pull the scapula away from the thoracic wall. For some that can be slightly unpleasant, but for others it can be very, very comfortable and almost, again, that, ah, oh, it feels so good. So once again here, we're going to retract and then we're going to distract the scapula, slight hold, and then relax. So have a go with these. Superior, inferior, medial and lateral rotation, medial and lateral glide, and distraction. Work through these in a position where you're approximated to the patient or your colleague, and let me know if there's any questions. What do you think of that distraction, man? I swear. Right?